Hello and welcome to the Dead on Arrival podcast, presented by the Reverend Dr. Donald E. Dunnigan Sr. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Well, there is a word from the Lord. Thank you, Dr. Dennery, for reading the scripture for us today. I'm going to just pick up verse 4 and uh, put the emphasis on verse 4 for the sermon topic. And verse 4 in Psalm 137 reads, How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? And I want to leave for a thought or topic today, learning to sing in a strange land. Occasionally when I am preparing the sermon to be presented, I will ask a central question. That's, that helps me to stay on task with the preaching woman. I have to grab a question. And hopefully the question is a relevant question. Um, it is a key question. And then once I identify what the question is, I go to work trying to provide some form of an answer to the question. But there are those times when after diligently seeking to find an answer or resolution to a question or challenge that I actually fail to complete the assignment before the time that the sermon is scheduled to be preached. So I'm working and I'm trying to get it and I try to get it before Sunday morning. And then if I don't, I try hard to get it at some point in the worship service. But I confess to you today, I got a sermon, but I didn't quite get the resolution to my question. Uh, and so the question is, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Or to make it more relevant uh, for us today, how do we sing the Lord's song when on the week leading to the celebration of the founding of our nation, the 4th of July, the Supreme Court justices have dismantled affirmative action. How do we sing the Lord's song when civil rights are being threatened? How do we sing the Lord's song when proposals are being submitted and laws are being legislated to create or to hinder uh, those citizens, some citizens, targeted citizens from voting and burdening citizens who attempt to vote for their representatives. How do we sing the Lord's song? Some may say we are actually living in the best of times, as Charles Dickinson said, or some may say we are living in the worst of times, or both all at the same time. But in Psalm 137, the Jews are bemoaning the loss of their freedom. They are saddened by the fact that they have been taken captive by an outside country who came in and captured them and then transported them back to their own homeland, away from the Jews' homeland, back to a place called Babylon. And after being transported to a foreign country, their captors have requested of the Jews that they sing one of their songs like they used to sing back in Jerusalem. Remember, I mentioned earlier that I was not able to find a complete resolution to the relevant question. In case I did not raise the relevant question, there were actually two. But the first one, here it is. How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? To paint the picture here, the strange land is any place, a physical place, or an emotional place, a psychological place, a financial place, a political place 
that confines you to somewhere you really, really, really don't want to be. Like Brittany Grinner when she was locked up in a Russian prison. She didn't just not want to be there, but she really, really, really did not want to be there. Like when the Central Park Five spent 10 to 13 years of their lives in prison due to a miscarriage of justice, they really, really, really did not want to be there. Like when Nelson Mandela was locked up for 27 years of his life in a South African prison, he really, really, really did not want to be there. That, 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 that's some place that we really, really do not want to be. We, we will call that our strange land. And, and the question is, how do we sing a song in a strange land, the Lord's song? We, we have to imagine why it was extremely difficult for them to sing the Lord's song in a strange land. The, the word sing is equivalent to our subculture, sang. Uh-huh, uh-huh, see? See, there's a difference between she can sing and she can sing. Is there a difference between the two? What, what's the difference? What's the difference? Tell, tell me, tell me. Yeah, yeah. When, when I, I asked you because I, I, went to, I went to Google and I asked the question. And, and here's what it says. While the present tense is sing, the past tense is sang. Most importantly, it said the present past participle is not sang, and this is where many people miss it. The required word is sung. And this is the point that I'm trying to get at. Sometimes people can only answer a question from their own point of view. Questioning the difference between sing and sang can, in fact, be a question of grammar. But that is not the only way words are used. When the Babylonians asked them to sing the Lord's song, they were asking them to sing. They weren't asking them to sing. The Hebrew word is they wanted them to sing. Like, like when Fantasia sang. Like when Whitney sang. Like when Leandra sang, Lord, deliver me. She didn't just say, Lord, deliver me. All I want to do is hurt me. No, no. She sang, Lord, deliver me. When you sang, it is not a question of tense, present, or past, but it's a question of intensity. It's intensity. It's, it's when you sang, it comes from a place that is so deep on the inside of you that it touches somebody else. When, when somebody, when, when, when they sang the song today, all I, I just want you, they, they didn't just sing it, but they sang that song. When, when they sang the song, all of my help, all of my help comes from me. They didn't just sing it. They sang all of my help. You could see it in their demeanor. You could see it in their sway. You could see it in their faces. You could see it in the expression. You could feel it on the inside because they didn't just sing one of the Lord's songs. They sang the Lord's song. That, that's, that's what the captors are requesting of the Jews. Sing us one of the Lord's songs like you sang back home. I thought that was quite interesting. That, that's what I, I really want to wrestle with for just a brief moment. How do we learn to sing in a strange land? 
How do we learn to sing uh, when, when things are down, when we are in a place where we really, really, really don't want to be? In our emotional state, in, in our physical state, in our, in our financial state, in, in our circumstances, in our social situation. How do we learn to sing one of the Lord's songs? Let, let me say this. I, I'm, I'm going to submit to you today that in order to learn to sing slash sing one of the Lord's song in a strange land, we must be willing to overcome one fundamental flaw when you are in a strange land. How many of you feel like you might be in a strange land right now, in a situation that you really, really, really just don't want to be in? Have you, have you been there? Some of you may not be there, but you might know somebody who's there. And so I'm going to help us out because I did get, I didn't say I didn't have a sermon. I just said I wasn't able to resolve it completely. I got a part of it. You all can figure the rest of it out. See, when in doubt, <laughs> here, here, here's, here's, here's the part that I really wasn't able to, to work out. And, and here it is. It is. To learn, let's, let's look at the text, because I think I might be able to share it with you like this. I looked at verses 1 through 4, and I, and I just observed how many times I saw we. And so the part that I wasn't quite able to resolve was how to strike the appropriate balance between our we and them watch this our me and you and our I and thou I know that's kind of that, that, that is that's philosophical it's, so let me let me show it to you in the text okay watch this I just want you to mark the number of times we say we or our and us in verses one through four. Right, here it is. So let me get this in the King James because that's, well, you have the new living. I can read it in either one of them. It's still there. Beside the rivers of Babylon, we sat and we wept as we thought of Jerusalem. So we sat, we wept, we thought, we put away our harps, hang them on the branches of popular trees for our captors demanded a song from us. Our tormentors insisted on a joyful him, sing us one of those songs of Jerusalem, but how can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a strange land? That, that's just verses one through four. Did you catch that? Yes. You, you catch the we's yes. and the hours, but I want you to catch the them's. Beside the rivers of water, we sat as we thought about Jerusalem and we put away our harps, hanging them on the branches of poplar trees for our captors. That's them. Demanded a song from us. Our tormentors, that's them, insisted on a joyful hymn. Sing us one of those songs of Jerusalem. But how can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a strange or pagan land? Do, do, do you see the we and the them uh, 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 dichotomy, the, the paradigm? So, so here it is. In working through singing the Lord's song in a strange land, we got to figure out 
how to balance out the we and the them. Sometimes we find ourselves in a strange land based off of how we are defining the we and the them. But the way we come to our we is based off of how I see my I. Are you with me? So watch verses 5 and 6. For if I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. Or if I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget how to play the harp. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. So, so now I got to figure out how to balance out my me and my you. I, I, if I get the we and the them balanced out and I can figure out how to make sure that my I, my me, is sufficiently rooted, then I'm able to impact how I function as a we. That's a lot. And it goes, it gets better. Because my I influences our we. The way I see me influences how I see you. And the way I see you determines how our we becomes a strong we. And if our we is weakened or corrupted or damaged, then it's going to be uh, it's going to affect the way we see our thou. Now here is our I thou because that's verses seven and nine, seven through nine. Oh, remember, oh, Lord, remember what the Edomites did on the day the armies of Babylon captured Jerusalem. Destroy it, they replied. Level it to the ground. Oh, Babylon, you will be destroyed. Happy is the one who pays you back for what you have done to us. Happy is the one who takes your babies and smashes them against the rocks. Now, the way I see my me affects how I understand my thou. <laughs> the way I understand me affects how I see God. And if I don't understand that there is a balance between the we and the them and the I and the you, and the I and the thou, I may wander into a space that makes it hard for me to sing the Lord's song in a strange land. Are you with me? I didn't lose you yet. Praise the Lord. We got ourselves a strong we. <laughs> so let me get back to my point. In order to learn how to sing the Lord's song in a strange land, we must be willing to let go of our limited identity. Oh, it's going it's to get worse. And walk in our epistemic integrity. That's the biggest word I know. I went to school, and that's it. I ain't got nothing else for you. Epistemic integrity. What, what I'm saying here is that now they are in captivity. And God knows we, we appreciate political freedoms. There are, there are benefits to having politi political freedoms. As a matter of fact, because we have political freedoms today, we can worship in a place like we're worshiping today and not be overly fearful that our lives will be threatened because we chose to worship God. 
we have certain human rights because we have political liberties. We have religious liberties. I can believe in whoever I want to believe in. I'm not forced to find faith in a God that doesn't fit my belief system. Because we have political freedoms, we can advocate for the rights to have access to internal police investigations when we find out there's probable cause for improper police conduct. Because we have political rights, we can access or have access to education and health care. Because we have political rights, Charles Drew was an African-American surgeon who improved techniques for blood transfusion and died because there were no laws in place to make it illegal for hospitals to refuse service to people based on the color of their skin. This leads me to the fundamental flaw. That is, we are social, we are political, we are ethnic, we are gender beings. But if we are willing to suspend or let go of our limited identity and walk in our epistemic, uh, epistemic integrity, then we are able to sing the Lord's song in a strange land. And here's what I mean by that fancy word. That when God made you, when God made me, the word of God says that he made us in his own image. When I do not enlarge the understanding of who I am, I operate in a limited yes. perspective of my identity. Yes. Am I black? Yes. yes. Am I male? Yes. But is that all I am? No. Oh, you got it now. So when I fail to operate in all that God made me, I am not walking in the integrity that God intended for me to walk in. Woo! Did I say something there? When God raised us up from the ground, the scripture said that he made us as individuals with our own separate thoughts, with our own separate emotions, with our own personality, with our own individualistic physicality. And each individual is uniquely distinct from every other individual. And yet when God made Adam and he brought Eve before Adam, Adam immediately said, wow. This is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. When I fail to see my brother or my sister as bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, then I'm not able to sing the Lord's song in a strange land. How was Frankter Victor able to sing the Lord's song in a strange land of being in a consecration camp as a Jew and yet not seeing his captors as evil people, but rather seeing them as being created in the image of God? And it kept him able to sing a, the Lord's song in a strange land. How was Mandela not able to forget about the fact that he was being held captive by folks who didn't appreciate him because of the color of his skin and yet not build hatred in his heart toward white people because he was able to see beyond his limited identity of who he was? How did Martin still see America as a beloved community and not become bitter and bound by his racism because he understood that he was not just a black man, but he was a human being and his captors needed to be free just as much as he needed to be free. So, so, so to sing the Lord's song in a strange land you've got to be able to understand the situation that you are in 
the people that are in that situation with you are still created in the image of God. You've got to be able to understand that God has a reason for us being in the circumstances that we are in. God has a purpose and a plan for our strange land experiences. Frank Victor said he was, he was learning how to fly a plane. He's an old man. He, he said, I, I went to learn how to fly a plane. And when I, when I learned, the, the, the pilot taught me that if I'm going from point A to point B and, and there is a down pull, he said, I can't aim the plane from here to the actual location here. He said, I have to aim the plane up here, and the wind will pull it down to here. In other words, if I see my brother as a captor, I can't aim my perspective of that person here. I got to aim it here to what they ought to be. And when I see what they ought to be, eventually I can pull them to the place where they need to be. Watch this. How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? You, you know what really got my attention was, 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 was not only uh, do, do we have to enlarge our understanding of ourselves, uh, uh, but, but what really got me was how we have to expand our connection to others. So I asked this question, how did the captors know, a, ooh, somebody said that they had a song. How did the captors know that they had the Lord's song? Because the text says they weren't singing them in a strange land. So if they weren't seeing them in a strange land, how did they know that they had this Lord's song? How did they know they could sing? Because they hadn't been singing. They may have sang, sung, or singed, but they hadn't been singing. So just maybe, maybe the captors were showing the Jews how to expand their connection to others. Isn't that interesting? That sometimes the people we think are there to pull us down, God can use those same folk to lift us up. God can use those same folk to show us our own limitations. He can use those same folks. They think they are hurting you, but he can use the situation to help us get a little stronger and a little better. So here's what I thought. The captors must have known that they could sing because they had turned on their ears and started listening. Ah, you missed that. The Lord's song could only have been sung in the temple of Jerusalem due to the elements of the Lord's song. See, we can sing, if, if you all, and I heard it, I heard my wife practicing for the songs this week, y'all. I, I, I actually know the songs. I could have just stood up there and sang in the choir. I know the songs because she practiced. But I'm sure that every last one of them practice. But when they practice at home, it didn't sound like what it sounded when they came to church. Because at home, that's just one person. But the Lord's song required it to be a congregational experience. 
And not only did it require it to be a congregational experience, it required them to have the instrumentalists. Yes. So even if they all got together, they still didn't have the organ plan behind them. So he said, we hung our organs or our harps up in the tree. So we're not even going to use our instrument to praise the Lord. And then we don't have our drums because we hung them also on the side. So the reason that they didn't know, hadn't heard the Lord's song is because they refused to sing them. But the reason they knew that there was a Lord's song is because they opened their ears and they listened for just a little while. So in other words, in order to expand our connection to others, we got to learn to listen to folk. We got to learn to be genuinely interested and curious about other people's lives. We got to try not to identify people based off of our own perspectives, but learn who they are based off of where they have come from. Now, not everybody's going to be open. I, I, I had a situation this week. I saw I saw a group, my folk, uh, in, in a park. They were hanging out, they were having a good time. I mean, you know what I mean, good time? Good time? Good time. Good time. And I had been in the park for a while, so by the time I got to the park, they were like, I walk over, I say, hey, how y'all doing? Oh, no, oh, no, oh, 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 and I had my Bible, because I had went and I was meditating, so I had my Bible. I couldn't hide my Bible, y'all. So I just I had my Bible with me, so I'm like, how y'all doing? You're good. I said, y'all look like y'all having a good time. But y'all celebrating, man. He said. The 4th of July. So I say, uh, he said, I, I, I don't appreciate what you're trying to do. I said, what am I trying to do? You, you, you're trying to tell us about God. I said, well, bro, I said, I really don't have to. I said, you look up in the sky. You see that orange globe up there? And look at the water flowing. And that grass you're standing on. And the tree that you're working on, standing on right now, what do I need to tell you about God for? <laughs> he said, <laughs> you want a plate? <laughs> you can take a plate. Go get a plate. <laughs> Not everyone will be receptive to your interests of learning about who they are. But I saw him as an extension of me. And I remember what Paul said that Jesus taught them, that in Christ, in God, there is no drunk or sober, no bond, no free, no captors. No captives, no male, no female. We are all one and got three things. I told you the first one is you've got to enlarge your understanding of who you are. We are all created in the image of God. When I find myself in a strange land, I got to remember that I'm still created in the image of God and that the people that I'm around are also created in the image of God. And if they fail to operate in the image of God that God has ordained for us to operate in, I've got to see how they are a reflection of me failing to operate in the image of God that God created me in. For the Jews, they fail to see the opportunity to tell their captors about the goodness of the Lord because they were in bondage. They didn't think they could tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. They didn't feel like they could sing 
the goodness of the Lord because they were in captive. They missed an opportunity to tell the Babylonians about how good God is in the midst of their trials. Number two. Number two, not only enlarge the understanding of ourselves, but expand our connection to other people. We got to be willing to come outside of our small inner circle. We got to learn something about the Greeks. We got to learn something about the Jews. We got to learn something about the uh, uh, about the, uh, the Italians. We got to learn something about all of the other ethnicities. And the only way you can do that is you got to learn to listen. Go to where they hang out. That's what the captors were doing. They went to the place where the Jews were hanging out and listening to them talk about how they used to sing back in the temple, but we can't sing anymore because now we are by the rivers of Babylon and all we can do now is just cry and bemoan the fact that we don't have it like we used to have it. But thank God that you're still here today and you can have what God says you can have. You can have joy in your heart in the midst of being in a strange land. You can have peace in your mind in the midst of being in a strange land. You can have love in your heart in the midst of being in a strange land. You don't let a strange land stop you from praising God. You don't allow a bad situation cause you to forget how good God has been. He woke you up this morning and he started you on your way. We can thank God for the fact that we got breath in our bodies and let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And I'm just about, I got one more point and I'm done. So you gotta, you gotta sing the Lord's song, you gotta be in the key of E. <laughs> the first one is to enlarge your understanding of yourself. Uh, the second one is to expand, that's E, our connection to others. But then I think this last E is learning to embrace the universality of God. What is the universality of God? I don't have a monopoly on God. I can't go around telling God what he ought to remember. And what he ought to forget. Here's what he said. Oh Lord, remember what they did on the day we found ourselves being captured in Jerusalem. What if God remembered the stuff you did on the day you weren't in the place you should have been? Saying the things you should not have done. God is a universal God. I can't tell God how to do Godding. Well, it might not be a word, but I bet you y'all understood what I meant, didn't you? How am I, in my limited knowledge, going to tell God what situations he ought to allow me to be put in? And when I find myself in a situation that I don't want to be in, don't like, that I really, really, really don't want to be in, how am I going to tell God to punish the folk who got me in this situation when God is above the folks who laughed at me, God is above the folks who caused my pain, God is above all of that, and I'm going to tell God to remember them? No, God is universal. That's why Psalm 46, 10 says, be still. You're in a strange land, sit still and know that I am God. I'm about to show you some stuff while you're in Babylon. I'm going to show you some things in your own strange land that you will never ever understand unless you sit still and know that I am God. I will be honored throughout the world. I don't have a monopoly on God. You don't either. None of us do. Psalm 19.4, yet their message has gone throughout the earth and their words 
to all the world God has made a home in the heavens for the sun and for the moon. God is in charge of it all. And in 2 Peter 2, and God did not spare the ancient world except for Noah and the seven others in his family. Listen, Noah warned who? The world. Why did Noah warn the world? Because God is the God of all of the world. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. You can't tell God how to do God work. Let God be God and you make sure you stay in the place that God has put you in until God decides to move you from out of the place where God has put you. And remember that you can continue to sing the Lord's song in a strange land. You can talk about Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. You can tell about the goodness of the Lord. You can sing the goodness of his grace and sing the goodness of his mercy. When waves of affliction swoops over my soul and sunlight is hidden from view, if ever I'm tempted to fret or complain, I just got to think of God's goodness to me and to you. Hasn't God been good to you? Yes, God has been good to us. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea pillars roll, he has taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Yes, I can sing the Lord's song in a strange land because I know that I've had some good days and I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and some dreary nights. But this is one thing I know when I look around and I think things over. All of my good days outweigh my bad days. So instead, I won't complain. I'm going to sing the Lord's song in a strange land because God has been good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Sing that song and seasons of distress and grief. Don't hold that song. In. My soul has often found relief and often escaped. The tempter's snare by thy return, sweet hour of prayer. Don't you let the devil steal your joy. You sing that song in a strange land. You tell of the goodness of the Lord. And don't let nobody turn you around don't let no trouble turn you around don't let no sickness turn you around don't let no disease turn you around don't let injustice turn you around you don't let nothing turn you around you keep on marching keep on singing keep on praying till you reach the promised land. Learn to sing in a strange land. And your soul will be blessed. Please rest to your feet. I want to pray before we extend the doors, open the doors. 
just think that somebody may have come in here feeling like they have been in a strange land. The blended sang so powerfully. When you're feeling low, nowhere to go. I can only imagine that that's how the Jews were feeling. Feeling low, nowhere to go. If you came in today feeling low, nowhere to go, I just want to, I want to encourage you today. Just open your mouth and just start singing. Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. All of my help, all of my help comes from thee. If I can get that I and that thou relationship balanced out, then I begin to understand that God has already ordained all of my days and that he has promised to never put more on me than I am able to bear. You ever get so down, you feel like, I don't know how I can make it, but, but, but that's in your mind. That's in your mind. That ain't in God's mind. For his thoughts are higher than our thoughts and his ways are, are higher than our ways. God has said, I already know while you're trying to figure it out, I've already worked it out. All you got to do is trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not into your own understanding. In all of your ways, just acknowledge him, the universality of God. If he can keep the sun in place, he can keep the moon in place, and he's been doing that for billions of years, do you not think that God can't handle you? Come on now. Yeah. You're 70, 80, 90, 100 years. God's got that. He take care of that in his sleep. So I want to pray. Father, we are so grateful for your word that you speak to us. You allow us to see ourselves as we are. But more importantly, you also reveal yourself to us as you are. So for everyone under the sound of my voice today, I pray that you would instill in our hearts and our minds as the blended voices say take everything away all I want is you show us what it means to place our full trust in you not knowing what tomorrow is going to bring I don't worry about tomorrow, but we just live from day to day. We don't borrow from its sunshine because the skies may turn to gray. But what we know is that you walk beside us and you know what is ahead. Teach us to trust you. Now, God, I'm asking you to help all of us to let go of our limited identity. We are more than our image, more than what somebody sees us as, the clothes we wear, the houses we live in, the jobs we have, the cars we drive. Oh, God, help us to understand that we are so much more than any of those things. Help us to move us 
from darkness into the marvelous light of your love for us. And those who may be wrestling, struggling, trying to figure it out today. God, I pray that you would open their heart to receive the peace that you have promised to those who keep their minds stayed on you. Help to shift their thoughts from the circumstances to the Christ who's over the circumstances. To shift from the storms to the Savior who's able to deliver us from the storms of life. We thank you for your faithfulness, God. We pray that you would help us to walk in the full bounty of who you have declared we are. We pray for forgiveness for failing to recognize that we have missed the mark. And then, oh God, we pray for peace that passes all understanding. Let it flow in this building today. Let it flow in this worship experience today. Let it flow into the minds of those who came wrestling with confusion. Oh God, we pray, peace be still. Peace be still. Now may we not leave from this place the same way we came, but be enriched to embrace how you care for the world the lilies in the field, the birds in the air, and certainly you care for us. Thank you, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us. See you next week. We upload our podcast every Sunday at 7 p.m. Thanks again, and have a great day.